Good morning. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and concerned citizens, not only in our republic, but throughout the Caribbean region and North America and Europe, wherever you may be viewing this broadcast from. Good morning to members of the press, and welcome to our regular Sunday morning press conference, coming to you from the office of the leader of the opposition in Port of Spain, Trinidad. Uh, every Sunday morning, as we all are yeah. aware, the United National Congress, the official opposition in the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, offers its insights, uh, observations, analysis, and critical remarks on current affairs in Trinidad and Tobago. We look at the state of the country, the economy, the society, and give our own um, assessment. Uh, this morning we meet uh, during extremely troubling times, very difficult times, for our democracy and the rule of law, and uh, we will be developing on some of these issues as we proceed. Uh, I'm joined this morning by Senator the Honorable Wade Mark, and myself, Rudolf Munilal, will take you through uh, the press conference this morning. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, I wanted to introduce Senator Mark. Senator Mark is an economist, former trade union leader, a former Speaker of the House of Representatives, former cabinet and government minister, and has served with distinction in the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. He is widely regarded as one of the leading authorities in the Commonwealth on parliamentary democracy and politics, having been uh, a member of the Parliament here for several decades. And this morning, he has an assessment to share with us on the state of the country and some very critical developments that have uh, occurred and some revealing themselves over the past four or five days. So without further ado, Senator Mark, the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Monilal, my colleague and friend. Good morning to the people of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Good morning to the leader, the political leader of our great party. Good morning to all our members. Good morning to the media and all of those persons who are viewing us on the World Wide Web here in Trinidad and Tobago, regionally and internationally. This morning, I would like to pay and focus some attention on the recent ruling by the law lords of the Privy Council, which, by the way, is the highest court under the Republican Constitution and settles all matters that have not been settled at the High Court or the Court of Appeal. Let me begin by quoting for you a very famous statement 
by Sir Walter Scott. And I quote, Oh, what a tangle web we weave when first we practice to deceive. End of quote. This quotation by Sir Walter Scott is captured very aptly in the screaming headline in today's Express. And may I share that headline with you, members of this beloved republic, the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Tangle web. And there's a whole page on this particular matter arising out of the Privy Council's ruling a few hours ago. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, this headline, along with Sir Walter Scott's quotation, tells us about the depth, breadth, and width that this government would go to engage in what I would like to describe on behalf of the party as their naked, brazen, ugly abuse of power aimed calculatedly to manipulate and to deceive not only the parliament, but you, the people of our beloved republic. Members of the media, there is an act that was the subject of deliberation that was decided by the High Court, not in favor of Ravi Balgobin Maharaj, not by the Court of Appeal who upheld the government's case. And what was that case? To cherry pick one provision, one section of that act to proclaim. And what was that section? To extend the life of local government bodies and those who inhabit them, namely the councillors and the older men, by one full year. May I indicate to the members of the public that my colleague who sits on my right is a member of the House of Representatives. I am a member of the Senate. That bill entitled, and I quote, the miscellaneous provisions, open brackets, local government reform, close bracket, act of 2020, was debated as a bill in both our houses. And not on one occasion did the Minister of Local Government and the Attorney General share with us as members of Parliament that that provision that they had included in the law re the extension by one year increasing the term from three years to four years was designed to provide an extension of the life of current and existing local government councillors and older men. They spoke in the house and they never told the members of the opposition and by extension, the people, that was the purpose. They came to the Senate 
and they also did not share with the people that was the intention. The United National Congress did not support this legislation in the both houses. In fact, we generated a minority report. And we abstained. The PNM deceived, manipulated, misled not only the parliament, but the people of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. At no time did the PNM tell the people that the intention of that provision was to extend the term by one year of existing councillors and aldermen. Never! So they not only manipulated the parliament, but they mama guide, fooled, and misled the people. How did they do this? They arrogated unto themselves the power to elect the people's representatives, members of the media. There is a well established constitutional principle that says. Only the people, may I repeat, only the people can elect their representatives. Only the people. We have a local Papa Doc Duvalier in the persona of the current Prime Minister. He did not know. Dr. Munilan knows that. I wait back know that the party that I am proud to be part of know about that and I dare say the people the only people who didn't know about it are the dictators in the personality of the PNM so here it is a fundamental constitutional principle well established in law for centuries the bulwark the foundation of our democracy a democracy cannot exist without the people having the right to elect their own representatives but ladies and gentlemen my brothers and sisters for six months Beginning from midnight, the 3rd of December. December 2022, this autocrat, this kleptocrat, this authoritarian, this dictator called Rowley and his gang running this country kidnapped like they did to Brent Thomas, hijacked the rights of the people the rights of the people to elect their own representatives not for one man dr munilal not for two months but for six months starting on the 3rd of december and continuing today six months rowley and his gang have kidnapped hijacked your right to vote in Trinidad and Tobago. That is treason. That is a crime against the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The government are hijacked and kidnapped and denied the rights of our people to go to the polls and elect their own representatives for six consecutive months and continuing as we speak. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a crisis, and there's only one way out. 
We have called for a trauma leader and we are doing it today. And I want to share with you and we support Dr. Munilal this editorial in today's Express. The editorial in today's Express. Elections is the only way out of this mess. Only election can resolve the problems. And the other thing, Mr. Prime Minister, let me warn you one time, because you always like to meet people on the pavement. I want to warn you, don't come to the parliament with no law to extend elections. Let me give you a warning. Do not come to the parliament with any law to extend the election time. The elections must be called now. You have already kidnapped the right of the people and substituted you and your gang in the cabinet as their representatives. And you elected those councillors, not the people. So as the Express said, and our leader has been saying long before the Express, Call the elections now. And the only bill that you can bring to Parliament is to validate. For the last six months, all decisions, all actions, all payments, all salaries, all allowances, all expenditure taken in terms of decision or expenditure, salaries and allowances incurred by the corporation in the form of salaries. So I saw a joker who has now turned rogue called Sanka saying that he has turned independent and he intend to serve the rest of his term as an independent. Poor pity soul. He doesn't even know that he has no office. He has no office. His office became vacant midnight the 3rd of December, 2022. Mr. Sanka, you have to study how you're going to pay back the people six months of salaries that you got unlawfully. That is what you have to think about. But that was aside. We are saying elections is the only answer to resolve this matter. So Dr. Rowley and your gang, in that cabinet. Your days are numbered. Call the elections now. Name the date. Go to President's house with whatever legal advice you have to get. Dissolve immediately. I repeat, dissolve immediately all corporations. To avoid the continuing hemorrhage. And you know what? Call the date for the elections. And you can only bring one bill to Parliament. And that bill is to validate the illegality that may have occurred in those 14 corporations over the last six months. It was not in March, as some people are saying. The illegality and unlawful conduct of this government began on the 3rd of December, 2022. I don't want to bore you, but I want to quote in paragraph 33 and 34 of the judgment given by the Privy Council. And I will deal shortly with the arithmetic of our disturbed Attorney General. I don't know if it's mental disturbance, but I disturbed when he made a remarkable submission Lee. only recently. Hear what the majority Privy Council judgment said in paragraph 33, Dr. Munilal, a democratic society will necessarily engage other rights like freedom of expression and association, for example, but 
the election of representatives for a fixed or maximum period is the foundation on which it is built. End of quote. I want to share with you the final paragraph that you need to absorb and internalize. Paragraph 34. It is inimical to a representative democracy that the representatives are chosen by anyone other than the electorate. It is not for Parliament, may I repeat, it is not for Parliament, still less the government, to choose the representatives. But if the amendments to sections 11 and 12 are construed to apply to the incumbent councillors and all the men, the effect will be that they have been chosen as representatives for an additional year, Dr. Munilal, not by those councillors and aldermen, not by those rather, who, but by the government which brought the amendments into force, whilst those councillors and aldermen were still in office. I end the quote. This is simply saying to the people of Trinidad and Tobago the fundamental constitutional principle that I earlier articulated. Only the people can vote in and vote out representatives, be they councillors, be they MPs. Not parliament, not government, not Rowley, not Amo, not Alwari, not Sinanan, none of them. Only the people, the electorate. Members of the media, let me also address another matter. And that has to do with the remarkable conduct displayed by our Attorney General. I cannot explain what is the state of Reginald Limo mental health. But for any Attorney General to come and tell Trinidad and Tobago that the government has won a victory <laughs> at the Privy Council, <coughs> That is cause for pause and cause for worry. What is the current state of the mental health of our Attorney General? Our Attorney General said three judges at the Court of Appeal supported his government's submission to postpone the election by one year. He goes to the Privy Council and he plucked out of their decision the two judges who submitted a minority report. And he said three plus two are five. And he has the majority. That is what our Attorney General, Dr. Munilal, I believe he is contesting and competing for space with Tommy Joseph. He has now become a comedian. Maybe a better one. A better comedian. He is a laughing stock right now as we speak in the entire Commonwealth. They want to know what has gone wrong with our Attorney General. And you know what is also important? He continued, Dr. Munilal, spewing Lies. Lies. That's why we call him Limo. From graduating as a note taker in the Miami court, as a junior attorney in the Miami court, he tells Trinidad and Tobago at a news conference on Thursday, hours after the judgment, 
was delivered. I only received, or the judgment I should say, only came out a few hours ago. And therefore I cannot properly pronounce on this matter, members of the media. You hear lie? That is lie. That is King Liar. Mr. Martin Daly, a legal, a legal luminary in our country, told Trinidad and Tobago just recently on television, I think it was Friday, Dr. Unilal, that the practice in the Privy Council is to send to the attorneys on both sides days before a copy of an embargo judgment. You hear what I'm saying, members of the media? Reginald Amor had access to that judgment days before he spoke to the media. And Lai Moore lied to the people by giving the media the impression, Dr. Munilal, that you know what? Only a few hours ago, this judgment was issued for them to conclude and allow him to escape his inability to address the issue even on a provisional basis. A liar you cannot find like him. So blatant, so naked, so open. This man ought to tender his resignation. But you know what, Dr. Munila? He has found a cash cow in his ministry. $250 million for five months. For fees, legal fees. Who is that man that is the attorney general going to pay these fees to? You already paid between the period 2015 to 2023 over $1.17 billion. And you're now going to engage counsel to advise you so you can advise the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. I just hope Dr. Munila, the same people who he paid handsomely, and the same people he is going to know, turn to for what is called advice. When I looked at the High Court proceedings in this matter, I see some strange names coming up. I see Douglas Mendez, SC. I see Richie Das, who just got silk. And I'm seeing a person by the name of Leah Abdullah. That name rings a bell. I, I, I'm, I'm not too sure, Dr. Munila, if David Abdullah has any relationship with that individual. Then I saw in the Court of Appeal the name Douglas Mendez. The name Richie Das, the name Leah Abdullah, again. And if that was not enough, Dr. Munila, we go to the Privy Council. Richie Das and Leah Abdullah featured prominently. Jobs for the boys, jobs for the girls, jobs for their financiers, judge, jobs for their families and friends. That is what is taking place in Trinidad and Tobago. Members of the media, I want to tell you that there were three simple issues from our analysis that the law lords had to settle in this matter. One, whether the term of office of these 14 corporations expired on December the 3rd, 2022, or as the PNN claim, would expire on March 3rd, 2024. The second issue that they had to resolve was whether the local government election was postponed until March the 3rd of 2024. And the third simple issue that the law lords had to determine is the current status of those councillors and all the men occupying office. 
And on those three simple issues, the law lords agreed with the attorneys representing these persons, that is Ravi Bangobin. So on all three counts, the attorney general lost. But you say you win. Well, I want to ask the attorney general, if you won, as you claim, tell us, who is going to pay a course, really? If you win, <laughs> would the Privy Council order you, Amor, representing the state, not to pay? And Ravi Balgobin has to pay? I beg to disagree, respectfully. You lost that matter. And I am predicting that the Privy Council will order you, Attorney General, the taxpayers of this country and the state to pay. So what nonsense are you telling the country that you win? You win, but you lose because you have to pay. And then you're trying to manip manipulate all the... Um, Manipulate the contents of the judgment. Let me just also indicate to members of the media the pattern of misconduct of this government just to achieve their goal and objective, which is to dominate, control, and to manipulate the resources for their friends, their family, and their financiers. And they will go to any length to accomplish this. Members recall 66 Thai in Tobago. Instead of drawing lots, what he did, he came to the parliament, created three new seats in areas that they normally win. Pass legislation, manipulating the EBC because he wanted control. He wanted to dominate. That was an example. Then we have the meritless where he appeared and manipulated the meritless, denying the commissioner of police, then Gary Griffith, the right of being our commissioner. Rowley did that. Then we had the abduction, Dr. Munilal, of Brent Thomas out of Barbados. Again, the attempt by the Prime Minister to overreach his power. Then you had the frontal attack and assault on the judiciary. First, it was the DPP. Later on, it was the judiciary. With Heinz accusing the judiciary of courting criminals as their friends. And up to this time, no apologies from the Prime Minister, no apologies from Heinz, no apologies from the Cabinet and the Government of Trinidad and Tobago. So ladies and gentlemen, it is clear that this government is not interested in nothing except the perpetuation of their power and their rule in Trinidad and Tobago. So let us just deal briefly, before I close, with some of the implications of this judgment. Members of the media, right now as we speak, local government is in a state of complete limbo. Councillors cannot occupy office because their offices, for all intents and purposes, are vacant. All the men cannot occupy office. The same. No decisions, no payments, no expenditure, no salaries, no allowances can be paid by the Corporation through their councils via their statutory meetings and approval through that process. If anyone, Dr. Munila, got a contract to pick up garbage 
from the 4th of December 2022. That contract is null and void and of no effect. It is unlawful. And that is why the Express made the point this morning to avoid chaos in Trinidad and Tobago, to avoid a slew of litigation against corporations. The Prime Minister must awake from his slumber. And by tonight or tomorrow, as the Express said, take a decision to do the following. Name a date for the elections, for local government elections. And secondly, bring to the Parliament only legislation to validate the illegalities that have taken place to get the support to pass that legislation. Those are the options available to the Prime Minister. I want to warn the Prime Minister in closing, do not bring any legislation to Parliament to postpone local government elections anymore. You have already hijacked and kidnapped the rights of the voters. For six months, you substituted yourself and the cabinet for the voters of this country. Six months. That is enough. Your only option, your only way out, Mr. Prime Minister, is to call the date, to name the date, to, to let the country know when local government election will be held in Trinidad and Tobago. That's the only option you have before you. Any other op option, you're going to create chaos, and confusion. You have already stirred chaos and confusion by your selfish decision to put into legislation a provision without informing the parliament that the purpose of that provision was to extend the life of the incumbent by one year. When you knew you had no authority to do so. So you lied to the people. You deceived your representatives. And you kidnap the voting rights of the population. Mr. Prime Minister, a word to the wise is enough. At this time, I will pause and ask my honorable colleague, Dr. Munilal, to continue in the area that he's going to focus on. Thank Dr. You. Munilal, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, <clears throat> Senator Mark, for the very comprehensive and simplified elucidation on the matters before us. In fact, I must tell you, <clears throat> during your presentation, I received a note from a constituent who was extremely grateful for the manner in which you were breaking down this matter and explaining it in detail so that the ordinary folks, laymen, so to speak, can understand what has happened and what should be happening in the days ahead. <clears throat> I share Senator Mark's view that today, even before the opposition should have had a press conference this morning, the government should have addressed this country already. In fact, Dr. Rowley and or Mr. Amor ought to address this country by sunset today, Sunday. This day, Sunday the 21st of May 2023, the government should address the country by sunset and indicate what is happening tomorrow. The rule of law has been fractured. It has been fractured, and we are now in a political quicksand. The government is in a political quicksand as a result of the fraction of the rule of law. They have destroyed local government uh, systems in Trinidad and Tobago because of their incompetence, their corruption, their lack of effectiveness, and, well, there are some words I can't uh, continue to use there. But... <clears throat> This is not the first time. I want to begin by reminding persons that it was not too long ago, a couple of years ago, we had a situation where there was no commission of police in this country. Mm -hmm. They had moved post haste to illegally and unlawfully retain, take back a nomination from the police service commission sent to the president 
when that happened, this country had no commissioner of police for a significant period of time that carried administrative and but probably more importantly, legal consequences. The Minister of Finance had to change policy to ensure that there was an accounting officer for the police by, by allowing a civil servant in the Ministry of Finance, I believe, to be an accounting officer. So this has happened before. If you recall, twice they came to change the laws and so on concerning the Police Service Commission, appointment of commissioner. They broke the law. It was Mrs. Kamla Prasad, the Cessa, and her team that had to go to court, and the court ruled in favor of the opposition leader that the government broke the law in the process to appoint a commissioner of police. The Court of Appeal, I believe, has ruled on this matter of the demerit points legislation to suggest that it is defective. Mm -hmm. So this is not the, the first time, but it might be the most significant point at fracturing the rule of law with political implications and consequences, financial consequences as well. As you said, Senator Mark, tonight, the garbage truck passing in the homes by people across the country or in the morning early as they do, they are not sure they can be paid. You can have a country here where no garbage pan could be emptied tonight because of the breakdown of local government and the PNM. All the structure of the courts and the nature of, of, of judgments and overturning judgments is not a football match home and away. So Reggie um, Amor, he says he got three goals in Trinidad and then he got two goals in England. So he has five goals. And Mr. Ram Logan and his team, they only get two goals in London. So he win. Now, what kind of judge? What kind of attorney general is running this country that sees uh, judgments and overruling judgments and the structure of the court system in, in British legal practice and in the Commonwealth as if it's Manchester City playing Real Madrid, hmm. home and away goal. And when, when, when I heard that, I was aghast that this is the attorney general of a country. I think he should return his silk. I agree. I strongly believe he should return that because you cannot come as an attorney general and tell us you score five goals and the next side score two. But it so happened the next side score abroad in the Privy Council. That is rubbish. A judgment has been overturned and you have the reasoning, their legal uh, principles and um, democratic principles, which you have read. Of and this strikes at another matter I want to raise. Mr. Amor, 
please stop campaigning for the Caribbean Court of Justice. I beg you. That amour will undermine any hope the Caribbean Court of Justice has to become the final court of, the, of Trinidad and Tobago. Amor will do it singularly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because what has happened now, he is campaigning for this court, and if he is a dunce in this way, nobody will take it seriously. Nobody. And I ask the question, was this recent judgment, was it the death knell of the Caribbean Court of Justice? Was it? Because you have seen what has happened here. The Privy Council, by a majority, overturned the Court of Appeal and the High Court, for that matter, in, in circumstances where the democratic rights of citizens mm. were under scrutiny. Exactly. And was this the death knell? Is it something we can, uh, we can depend again? Because Mr. Amor, from the time he came in office, he says he, his, his major objective was for this country to sign on to the Caribbean Court of Justice. Well, you are doing them no good. You are not a poster boy that can help. I suggest you stop campaigning for the CCJ, if, mm -hmm. if that is your objective. I, would, I go further to say the Attorney General in that matter did something that is, is, is awful, horrible. He, he, he threw veiled threats and some unveiled at the media to suggest that if the media and journalists were interpreting the judgment and the ruling as everybody is free to do, you ought not to do that because you can be stepping on the issue of contempt. Mm -hmm. That was the Attorney General threatening the media, opinion makers, writers, and so on. But he went to Parliament hours, you know, hours after or so, yes. and speaking about judgments, I think it was the week before, speaking about the judgment yes. in the Brent uh, Thomas matter, right. he went into detail into a judgment mm -hmm. yes. in the Brent uh, Thomas matter. Clear breach. Eh? Clear breach of the yes. Parliament um, Sub standing Sub orders and subjudice. And then comes to the media and say, listen, don't try to interpret this, you know, because uh, you could be um, on dangerous ground on contempt, in contempt. That is the attorney general we are dealing with. But you see, for this attorney general, threat is a substitute for achievement because there is no achievement by this attorney general. And I reiterate the point that the political leader has made, that you have made so eloquently, that the government has run out of options. Their back is against the wall. They have run out of options. They have to call the elections today because the 90 days have gone. It is a debate as well that they may have to validate the work of the councillors. Mm -hmm. But that can only be validated in a re with reason until the, the judgment of the Privy Council on the 18th of April. So after the 18th of April, you cannot validate something where the ruling has already said that you are illegal April. May. may sorry right. in um in in may yeah. may 18th last week thursday yes. sorry so i correct that yes. so may 18th the press conference the issue here today is that they must call and declare the date for election yes there may be some legal work as it relates to validating the work of councillors and um all the men mm -hmm. post march 2nd as the case may be mm -hmm. to but only to May 18th, only to the day of the judgment. It cannot be after because you were already told that you are illegal. You are, and I have read the newspaper today and there are some PNM councillors and, and chairmen and so on indicating that business continue as usual and they are in their office. You are squatting. You are illegal. Exactly. Mr. Sanka, you have no floor to cross. The, the floor, the floor left you. Mm -hmm. There's no floor. So the PNM councillors who are facing, who apparently are getting absolutely no legal advice, are going illegally into their office using taxpayers' money. They are, some of them use the vehicles. Some of them have office. They may have staff. You cannot, Mr. PNM councillor, alderman, you cannot use a big pen belonging to the government of Trinidad and Tobago. You are out. You are out. So I want to advise those people who are without advice, clearly, because the, the, the Minister of Rural uh, Development, I believe he's in hiding at an undisclosed location. The Attorney General is, is, advice, is getting advice. The Prime Minister is in a bunker somewhere, desperately trying to get a ball out. So the government has gone into hiding, so to speak. Their councillors are breaking the law tomorrow morning, Monday morning. 
and they need advice. And the UNC is very clear on this matter. The elections has to be called. Whatever legal um, procedure to validate until last week, uh, Thursday, must be done. Uh, other legal matters, there may be other legal matters which may arise. That will take care of itself as well. But to Mr. Amor, I want to say, listen, clearly you don't have advice and you cannot advise yourself. Why don't you swallow your pride and call Mr. Ram Logan senior counsel? Clearly he understands the matter. The Privy Council agreed with him. And he is in a position as a patriot to give you advice if you want advice. So there is no uh, scarcity of good advice around the place on this matter. And Mr. Ram Logan has declared already, as Mrs. Passat B. Sessa, the issue is to address the country and set the date for the election and let us move on. And let us move on. But the Attorney General of this country pose a threat to the rule of law. Exactly. And that to me is a fundamental issue. Anytime a man goes to a press conference and declare that this is home and away goal and he win, dealing with a judgment of the Privy Council, this, this chap has some, some mental faculties are uh, suspicious. <laughs> This elevator don't reach the top floor. I want to, on, the, on this matter again, before I leave it, just to indicate that tomorrow night, incidentally, just to remind our audience, we'll be in San Fernando, Naparima College for our Monday night report, where the political leader and other speakers will address not only this matter, but other matters as well, related to local government and related to other issues in the national community that we face. Uh, I want to move on to a couple other issues because I believe Senator, uh, Senator Mark has dealt with, with, with this matter. I just wanted to put on the record as well, Senator, that I have in my hand um, a couple of documents here which I think the people of Trinidad and Tobago would like to see. And I would just hold it up to show people. In case the Attorney General is looking to hide, this is actually the cabinet note. I have it in my hand. I don't know why I still receive cabinet notes years after the meeting cabinet office, but it's in my hand. Cabinet minute number 1935, of course. It is November 3rd, 2022. This is Attorney General and Legal Affairs cabinet uh, note number 1935, of course, November 2nd, 2022. This is the uh, cover sheet and this is the cabinet minute and note. In this, it is clear, without reading every single detail of this, it is clear that Mr. Amor went to the cabinet. He indicated in this note that he came to the cabinet having assessed and carefully discussed this matter um, with learned counsel and fellow ministers and so on, incidentally. And he came to the cabinet and he said in his cabinet note, I so advise to proclaim section whatever, all the sections and so on. And they shall come into operation the 8th day of November 2022. I advise and I ask cabinet to agree. Mr. Moore, this is you. You started this problem, this janjat as they would call it, this fracturing of the rule of law. You are responsible. In any decent, mature Westminster democracy, the attorney general would have been fired. He would have been thrown out the top floor of, the, uh, of a window. If he had done this, advise the cabinet. The legal advisor to the cabinet is the attorney general. He advised them to break the law. And the man merrily goes along his way. And so he went on home, uh, home goal advantage. So I leave that there. I think more will be said in the coming, um, in the coming days. I wanted to just touch another issue before I close and, and to remind uh, the national community, uh, Senator Mark, that while we deal with local government and so on and the critical matter, crime continues unabated, unabated. unabated. And you will see the front page of the newspaper is now a split between local government here, one newspaper with the, the level of crime, the level of brutality. And last week at a standing finance committee on national security, we raise certain matters because we have information. The government itself, the Ministry of National Security, gave us the data on the, the amount of CCTV cameras that are operational at this time because it's something we keep our finger on because there was corruption. There was corruption in the tendering process for CCTV cameras. 
where they went and by some bubble brought in contractors, which is the subject of an investigation in New York at this time, because that one company is also registered in the United States of America. And there is an investigation ongoing in New York at this time on that company's ability to contract in Trinidad and the circumstances. But they did it. They, they preferred not to pay TSTT and its uh, providers. All the cameras fall down. All the cameras are uh, dysfunctional. And look at the information we got last week. Trinidad has 1,607 cameras. Do you know 45%, 730 are not functional? Look at here. They have functional with limitations. Now, I don't know what functional with limitations is with a camera. Is either a camera working or it's not working? I don't know what functional is. But they have non-functional and functional with limitations, which mean the both category are not fully functional, long and short. 45% in Trinidad, not functional. Tobago, hear this, 189 cameras. And I remind this country, it was a partnership government that put CCTV camera in Tobago. We did that because there was one murder, I believe, somewhere 2013 or 14, and we put the cameras in Tobago. We said, no. We have to take steps to deal with this matter. Of that 189, 99 not working. 52% not working in Tobago. So more than half the cameras not working in Tobago. And the total, if you want to call it that, Trinidad and Tobago, 46% of the CCTV cameras are not fully functional. And they want to fight crime. That's what, they want to fight crime. It is not functional. I was told recently, two of the Cape Cars uh, patrol boats to the Coast Guard, some accident in the seas, they're in Santo Domingo being repaired, and so on, not operational, again. And these are serious matters. When we add that to the mobile um, scanners, <coughs> we obtain mobile scanners for the government of Trinidad and Tobago, almost $27 million. It is not functional, whereas when Mr. Griffith was commissioner of police, it started to work. All the bandits, I mean, we are bombarded by what you call video and social media. With We actually see real footage of, of criminal activity, murder, robbery. All the, the fellas with the gun, they don't walk five miles. They don't say, okay, I done rob you. I'm going to take a jog back home. They jump in a motor car. A car is always waiting, coming up, leaving, and so on. Those are the cars that carry the, the guns and the bandits. The mobile scanners were meant to be on the road that would pick up illegal firearms on the move. That is what they have the capacity that when vehicles pass on the highways and byways, wherever, they will, they will actually scan a car, a vehicle, sorry, and it will tell you there are firearms there in the trunk, firearm in the back seat. And all you do is you flag the car, you stop the car. If someone is with a lawful firearm, it's fine. You have your certificate license. But you will find persons with illegal firearm who are on their way to commit an offense or have committed an offense and driving slowly within the law because the bandit will not be speeding because, of course, the police will stop them. So they will always be driving within the speed limit. But you will find the illegal guns. That, was, that is what we invested $27 million in. Mr. Hines has had the, those machines for one year and cannot fix them. Ministry of National Security. Mr. Hines is the biggest failure in national security. But as a friend reminded me, you could have state-of-the-art technology. But if you have state-of-the-art idiots, then the technology is worthless. So having technology means nothing. If you, The people who need to manage that themselves are, well... In that manner. The, the final issue, before I um, we take some questions here, would be the issue regarding UDCOT. I wanted to flag yet again, as part of my shadow portfolio within the um, parliament, we monitor the activities of UDCOT. UDCOT, as you know, Senator Mark, was suspiciously placed. First time ever a project management, large-scale construction company is ever placed under the office of a prime minister in Trinidad and Tobago. The country allowed that. Hours later, as you know, a questionable financial deal took place. We remember that. But that is not the issue here. 
The issue is that Unicot has gone back to the Calder Heart days. We are back to the bad old days of Calder Heart, where anything goes now. There is no structure. There are no policies in place. Uh, underqualified staff. Could you imagine there's a staff member at Unicot? And I'll speak more to this on the platform. I'm not afraid of that. The staff member of Unicot is also a contractor. And the staff member of Unicot assesses, you know, contractors because uh, I think he's in the project management unit. And he's in project management assessing contractors and he's a contractor. And is on the verge of getting a contract to build a youth development center in the East West Corridor. Now, how, what kind of government allows employees, full-time employees of a project management company to be a contractor competing with the very contractors who he's assessing? Yes. Yes. So imagine this, this character is, is, is working in Unicot, assessing bids from persons who are competing with him in another project. That is happening under the eyes of Noel Garcia and Keith Rowley, mm -hmm. the line minister, because they have taken the off-commission report and threatened the garbage bin. Our government, Jolene John, myself, Mrs. Passad Bissessa, we implemented 84% of the recommendations of the off-commission of inquiry for anti-corruption reform. Mm -hmm. We implemented that. They have undone all of that. So this is what is happening today. In rural development company as well, tenders are sharing out like nuts and doubles without process, without proper accounting, without transparency, and persons are just sharing it out. I tell you, they are sharing it out like doubles on the street. Contracts for community center, youth development facility, roads. I raised one in San Fernando a few months ago, but I am talking about Udicott and this particular individual, which I will speak to. In detail. This is the same Unicot that boasted that they came in with the Red House. The partnership was, was building the new Red House, uh, refurbishing Senator. You are integral part of that, and I always remember as speaker, you wanted an independent, neutral, uh, transparent institution to construct the Red House and the accompanying building. You recall. Sure, sure. Today, Unicot is doing that. They opened with fanfare the Red House. You remember? Invited um, all the people, brought out champagne and shrimps and so on. Celebrate. A few months after the House of Representatives leaking, they told us we will be back in our chamber December last. This is May. No sign of going back in the chamber. And while that happened in the chamber, we are in the Senate showing signs of leak now. <laughs> I am told that the contractors who worked on the um, Red House ceiling are the same contractors who repair the same thing they built and now we'll take a double money for the same work. Whether it's roofing, it is leaking, it is air conditioning, condensing, whatever it is, it is the same work they are doing over for this for more money. That is under Udicot. Look at the management of the Port of Spain Central Block. A contract expired on March, I think the first week in March this year. Just the same time local government um, people expire, the same time the Port of Spain Central Block phase one contract expire. They have finished 50% of the work. And the people are still working there now, long after. The contract provides for $50,000 a day in damage if you didn't finish on time. They are not charging the contractor. Why? Is that contractor connected to Balize House? Are they? You remember, Senator Mark, not many years ago, in Tobago, a man was building the Scarborough Hospital. A next man building Landate. And Gravel and Son was walking. The same thing is happening in Trinidad, Port of Spain, under our eyes. And I will be holding Udicot to account and the Rural Development Company to account for much more in the coming days. But I will leave it there today because we really uh, must focus on this calamity that the country faces with the, uh, where they have fractured the rule of law and they have now undermined completely the local government institution. So I will leave it there now and invite any questions that members of the press may have. We have some questions coming in. The, um, this one is for both of you. Um, given, what, given what you've said on the matter with, regarding the Privy Council, um, some commentators believe that the government may now be coming to Parliament to get an amendment to the legislation to make this, uh, to sort of rectify this issue. What is your position on that? Well, we have made it very clear 
that the United National Congress, having interpreted that judgment from the Privy Council, we are not going to vary our stance. The only legislation that the United National Congress will entertain coming to this parliament is to validate and to legalize the illegalities. Anything else is trouble with a capital T in Trinidad and Tobago. That is our position. We will not be entertaining any other legislation outside of validating the illegalities. Any attempt to extend the election process in Trinidad and Tobago, that is going to be trouble with a capital G. Let me just add that every single day that goes by, the PNM are breaking the law exactly. by not calling elections. If they do not call election at the end of this day, the 21st of May, they are breaking the law tomorrow. And they are encouraging their officers, their, their formerly elected officers, to break the law. And just to add to Dr. Munila, not only are they breaking the law, members of the media, they are denying sure. the people of Trinidad and Tobago the right to exercise their vote. That is what Rowley and his gang in the cabinet are doing every hour that passes without naming the date for general, for local government elections in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, both of you mentioned the behavior of the Attorney General with regards to this matter. Um, recently, Martin Daly, writing in the newspaper, said that the Attorney General, the Attorney General would have received those judgments a few days beforehand. Um, it would have been embargoed, of course. Um, do you think that, given that his response on this matter should have been at least clear? Well, let me say, as Mr. Daly said, but Mr. Daly is saying that, and, and everyone knows that in the legal fraternity, any lawyer who has practiced for a short period of time even will know that there's a protocol with the Privy Council that they will have an advance copy, an advance um, notation to the council involved in matters. And they will know in some cases days before, maybe even a week before, they will know of the judgment. Now, it is a very sensitive matter and it's a very confidential matter. Lawyers ought not to be publicizing, to be going in the public domain and speaking of a judgment that has not yet been delivered. So there's a, there's a, a, a very tight protocol as it relates to that. What Mr. Reginald Amor is doing is he's lying. I mean, flatly, he's lying. He would have had knowledge of the judgment, of the ruling. He would have had days of knowledge. He could have prepared himself, sought advice and so on on the matters, and be in a position to speak with a bit more authority as to his advice to the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. So, he, you know, he's pulling wool over your eyes. He, he thinks he can do that. Um, and it is unethical, I believe. It, it is certainly dishonest. It is dishonorable for an Attorney General to do that. I mean, I can tell you, um, there were even members of the Cabinet who are not the Attorney General who was aware of this judgment. Uh, the Prime Minister clearly would have been aware of it, wherever he was. He, he's like Marco Polo now, all over the world. But wherever he was, he would have been aware of it, and the ought to, Attorney General ought to have prepared himself better than trying to bluff his way through and then indicate that he had to leave the press conference because he had a meeting with important people and advisors. The same advisors who misadvised him, huh? who, who ill-advised him. It's the same advisors. And he had to run away from the media and so on. All of that is just theatre and, 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 and polytrick, so to speak. Um, Dr. Muller, how would you respond to those who say that the Privy Council judgment does not specifically call on the government to call a um, local government election within a certain time frame? Um, President, and they feel that because of that, he's entitled, he's under no pressure to call an early election as well. Well, I don't think I don't think anybody is write a letter to the prime minister and tell him put on clothes when he wake up in the morning. But somehow we know he need he can't walk around the place naked. There are some things that are self evident. Mm -hmm. There are some matters that are self evident. If the privy council tell you that these people their term of office expired, they are illegal, they are in occupation, um, unlawful occupation of office. It means you must call an election that 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 an election is. 
it, it must be called. It is an, an it, it is an injunction to call an election. The Privy Council don't have to tell you in black and white. Okay, having said that, now could you please call the election in um, ninety days or thirty days, please? And we will probably give you the date. Avoid this holiday. Avoid that weekend. Um, Diwali coming. Be careful. Don't call around that. That is uh, rubbish. The Privy Council have told you that you are you are on on unsung legal footing. So so gather yourself and take action. And in this case, the only action is a, is a de declaration of elections. But you see, I, it comes to the point, there are apologists for the PNM. There are apologists out there for the PNM who are cowards. And I want to say it loud. They are cowards. They know what the PNM doing is wrong. But they try to apologize by saying, well, the judgment didn't say call the election, you know. And it was three to two. So maybe a push again. Mm -hmm. you, you know, that kind of tomfoolery. There are people out there like that. And they are apologists. And I make no excuse for saying there are people out there. Mrs. Prasad Bissessa refers to many of them as grovelers and eater food. I like the term yes. personally. Yes. Um, they, they, they don't have the testicular fortitude to come out and say the PNM is at fault. They hide behind. I see one of the, the lawyers doing that too. They hide behind this thing. Well, the PNM and the UNC, um, two of them, and one do this and one do that. We did nothing. We advised the government in the, in the parliament that what they were doing was wrong. As Senator Mark told you, he didn't go so far as to tell you about the previous occasion. But in the parliament, at no time did these people, the PNM, tell us that the effect of what we are doing today is to hold the incumbent councillors and aldermen in for another year. At no time they told us that. They lied. They deceived. They deceived the parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. If that was their intention, clearly they could have made it, uh, you know, lucidly clear in the legislation, as Mr. Manning, I think, years ago did something. Clearly, they could have accommodated that and tried to pass legislation with that. But you see, I always tell people, there are congenital li liars around us. If they have a choice to tell the truth or lie, when neither, ma neither matters, it doesn't matter whether you lie or tell the truth, they will lie. That is a congenital liar. And that is, that is what created, as Senator Mark started by telling you, this tangled web that we have found ourselves in. Let me just add to the Unilal's uh, statement. Members of the media, the PNM under Keith Christopher Rowley is mortally afraid of facing the people in a local government elections. They are going to be wiped out. So what the PNM may want to do, which is going to be very dangerous and troubling for the stability, the political stability of this country, is to come, as you claim, some people are asking, to do something that the Privy Council has not told them to do. Now, you don't expect a Privy Council to tell any government that they should hold election within a particular time frame. That is not the business of the Privy mm -hmm. Council. The Privy Council, as I said, had simple issues. They have pronounced on those issues. The government, the local government bodies, councillors, and all the men, their term expired on December the 3rd, midnight, 2022. They have been in office for six months, illegally and unlawfully. And the only way to resolve this matter is not by coming to extend the term. The only option is to call the date for local government elections. Um, on another topic, um, and recently um, the Commissioner of Police has said that um, even though she hasn't been able to get a, uh, a grapple on the crime situation, she does give herself uh, an excellent rating in the job that she has done so far. And secondly, does the opposition have a comment on the fact that the officers involved in Brent Thomas up there are now reportedly getting counseling for the ordeal that they went through? Well, first, let me say that I myself raised that matter with the commissioner on Wednesday last, I believe. And um, to say, first, the commissioner was not aware that any officers in the 
Professional Standards Bureau or anywhere else involved in the Brent Thomas matter uh, had sought and or received counseling. Um, so that was really a matter raised, I think, by the president of the second uh, social welfare secretary. Thing, I must confess, as I told the commissioner, when I heard she got an excellent grade, I thought it was Dr. Wayne Fedricks of Howard University. He struck again because he has a way of seeing the world in a different way. Um, she said she gave herself that grade. Uh, all I can say is that there is an article in the newspaper today, I believe, in the Guardian, or I can't remember. One of the newspapers today dealt with this issue of self-grading of persons, and it, does, it will not inspire confidence in the country when one looks on and sees the level of crime. And the head of the institution, the body to fight crime, is saying, I have done an excellent job, meaning she's saying that I cannot do better because I'm excellent. I cannot do better. When you see the state of criminality in Trinidad and Tobago, on a, on a matter, as you raised, the Brent Thomas matter, the commissioner indicated that within two weeks of last week, Wednesday, she will have a written report on the Brent Thomas matter um, to give to the Minister of National Security. Again, look at the events. The, the, the Attorney General in Barbados spoke almost two weeks ago or so mm -hmm. on this matter and declared in the Parliament that he had received written reports. This is now the end of May coming up. And in a month or maybe six weeks, the government of Trinidad and Tobago cannot find a written report on the alleged abduction of a citizen on foreign soil. And that is a very, very troubling matter. Again, at the center of that storm is the Minister of National Security, who appears oblivious to the, to the nature of this crisis in particular. And left to Mr. Hines, I can say every stone will be left unturned in the quest for justice and truth. Those are the questions we have so All right, well, before we close, I just want to reiterate a very important point. No government, no parliament can substitute themselves for the will of the voters in any democracy. And every day that passes by and any attempt to extend the date for the holding of general elections would simply mean that the government has continued to substitute itself for the will of the electorate. There's a social contract that binds the governed and those who are governed. The governor and those who are governed. And if the government breaches that social contract and does not adhere to the democratic principles that constitute the foundations of our society and our nation, then the people will have to take whatever measures and steps they deem necessary to preserve the rule of law because the government would have gone rogue in Trinidad and Tobago. We have to retain, maintain, sustain, and protect the rule of law and the democracy of our land, represented by the will of the people to elect their representatives. If the government decides not to adhere to those principles, the government is asking for trouble, the government is buying trouble with a capital T. And the people will decide the fate of this government, whatever they decide, whatever action they decide to protect their democracy, their democratic norms, their democratic values, and of course, the principle of the rule of law. I will say in closing that we live in difficult times. We have seen before our eyes a pandemic, a global phenomenon. In Trinidad and Tobago, we are witnessing now the collapse of the rule of law. They have fractured the rule of law. The local government institutions have collapsed. I am I, I'm very wary that their behavior is uh, repetitive 
And I am wondering whether this government, as devilish as they sound, may also take steps to postpone a general election, given their unpopularity, whether this is really the precursor to postponing a general election, which has grave political consequences. On Wednesday, the parliament is meeting. Would you believe, members of the press, on Wednesday, the parliament is meeting, not to discuss local government, not to cure this, this crisis. We are meeting to discuss a land matter to deal with property tax. So imagine the government wants to debate property tax at a time when local government collapse. They have a bill to make borrow two corporations or two regions. They are concerning with making a borrow across the country when it have no local governments in place in the first place. They're concerned with making borrow. That is window dressing. That is window dressing. And I want to assure the people of Sri Tobago that the United National Congress, led by the Honorable Kamala Prasad Misesa and her team, we will stand strong in Parliament on Wednesday and we will demand, we will force, we will, will compel a debate on local government election and we will hold this government to account for the violation of the rule of law, the collapse of local government institutions in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you.